Imagine spending almost $20 million to buy something and then dumping it in the trash. That's essentially what happened with a giant experiment dreamed up by New Mexico politicians. News 13's Larry Barker investigates and shows you what we all got stuck with. That's a lot of money to waste. It ended up being um, a useless, worthless project. Is it fair to say that taxpayers suffered a $20 million loss? From where we sit here today, I'd say yeah. It's a model 8200 Altix ICE, and it's something few people have ever seen. A former governor touted it, and legislators poured millions of dollars into the device. Today, it's stashed at this Santa Fe warehouse. Just three years ago, the Altex 8200 was kept in a high security clean room at a guarded facility. Today, it's stashed among junk chairs, discarded desks, and obsolete filing cabinets gathering dust. New Mexico's surplus property warehouse is the end of the line for Encanto, New Mexico's $11 million supercomputer. We couldn't even give it away because it is so outdated. Daryl Ackley is New Mexico's chief information it, officer. Really Today, New Mexico's supercomputer, what is the value of this in dollars? Uh, zero dollars. There may be some residual value for the, you know, the metals and the equipment, but as far as its value on the books, it's zero dollars. Eight years ago, the Altix 8200 was among the fastest supercomputers in the world. Today, it sits abandoned, a classic textbook case of mismanagement, abuse of power, and government waste. The third fastest computer in the world here in New Mexico. It was the brainchild of former governor Bill Richardson. Build a supercomputing center and you create high-tech jobs, stimulate the economy, and elevate New Mexico's international profile. Legislators appropriated $11 million to buy the 172 teraflop device capable of making trillions of calculations per second. Governor Richardson presided at the 2008 ribbon cutting. This project invests in our future. It's going to inspire new generation of scientists, new students, and new researchers. The state created a nonprofit partnership with a local group to manage the high-tech operation. Encanto's massive hardware was installed at Intel and made available to research universities, scientists, and engineers across the country. As news of our powerful new computer spreads, we're hearing from companies all over the country who want to do business with us. However, despite all the hype, New Mexico's venture into the supercomputing business was one huge gigaflop. Rather than generate revenue, Encanto relied on taxpayers to keep it afloat. The annual electricity bill alone ran to a million dollars. Encanto's energy requirements was enough to power 700 average homes for an entire year. And once Encanto went online, it created few, if any, new jobs and attracted virtually no paying customers. In fact, the supercomputer was so mismanaged that almost 90% of its computing time was given away for free. Once the third fastest in the world, by 2012, New Mexico's machine had slipped to 185. Today, the eight-year-old supercomputer is simply outdated and no longer ranked. So far, taxpayers have poured almost $20 million into the Encanto supercomputing operation. So we issued a cease and desist and then said enough's enough, we're decommissioning the machine and we unplugged it, turned it off. The 20-ton supercomputer was packed up, loaded in semi-tractor trailer rigs and placed in storage last year. The investment was made and we got, you know, yay, we have a supercomputer and everything's going to go great. Operating a supercomputer really takes a program that's in it for the long term. I just don't think that vision was there, or if it was, it wasn't executed against. It really seems like it was buy the computer, turn it on, and then we're done. It wasn't run efficiently or even correctly. I would characterize it as being very irresponsible 
and without uh, a business plan on how the purchase of an $11 million supercomputer was going to be used and how it was going to make money. In 2011, Encanto was put up for sale. But ultimately, um, you know, there was just no one interested in buying the machine. Why is it that nobody wants to buy the state's supercomputer? The technology advances incredibly fast, especially when it comes to supercomputers. You could buy a fairly comparable machine and operate it for less than this machine would take just to operate. Why did that venture fail? You'd have to ask Bill Richardson why that failed. Why was this another one of his boondoggles where you spend a ton of money, you dream big, and you have no plans? We use taxpayer dollars to experiment on something that we just didn't know how it was going to work. Was it a good decision? Your opinion? Uh, especially knowing what I know now and as a taxpayer, I would say no. It, it wasn't a good decision. As a computer scientist, there's the part of me that, you know, likes the aspect of a supercomputer, but as a taxpayer and as somebody who, you know, has, has had to see what it became and how it was operated, no, it was not a good decision. So what do you do with an $11 million, eight-year-old, outdated, used supercomputer. Well, some of it may be donated to local universities. The rest will likely be sold for scrap. It's not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It is a taxpayer issue in how irresponsible that money has been used um, it, with a dream. It's a boondoggle. I mean, you, you hope something's going to happen, build it, and they will come. It didn't. Larry Barker. KRQE News 13. You can read much more on Larry's investigation on our KRQE app, including what supercomputers are top ranked in the world right now.